All right. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Cloud Native Live, where we dive into the code behind Cloud Native. I'm Taylor Dolezal, a senior developer advocate at HashiCorp, where I focus on all things infrastructure, application delivery, and developer experience. It's always a good time. <laughs> uh, every week, we bring in a new set of presenters to showcase how we work with Cloud Native technologies. They will build things, they will break things, and they will answer your questions. Join us Wednesdays at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. This week, we have Michael Haberman here to talk with us about trace-based testing with Open Telemetry. Uh, also, join us for KubeCon and CloudNativeCon Virtual North America, October 11th to the 15th to hear the latest from the Cloud Native community. Uh, some housekeeping. Uh, this is an official live stream of the CNCF and as such is subject to the CNCF code of conduct, which simplifies down to please be excellent to one another. Uh, please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of that code of conduct. Basically, please be respectful of all your fellow participants and presenters. And with that, uh, howdy, Michael. I'd love to hand it over to you to kick off today's presentation. OK, thank you. So hello, everybody. My name is Michael Abelman. I'm the co-founder and CTO at Aspecto. And today, I would like to speak with you about an open source that we created. Um, this open source is based on open telemetry and how to use open telemetry um, in testing phases rather than in production issues that you're having. So most time that you use uh, um, open telemetry, you do that to collect traces, metrics, and logs, and you would use it uh, Basically, when you have a production issue, uh, when you're trying to debug, to understand, to troubleshoot what's happening with your system, and that is super important and super great, and we do it ourselves. Um, but this kind of raised the question for me. Um, we are paying a lot of money to have this data, to collect it, to store it, to analyze it. Uh, it's really expensive, and we're doing it only uh, we're using it only we, when we have issues, when something broke. Um, so then I asked myself, okay, um, I'm paying a lot for that. What else can I do with it? Um, maybe I can use it in other places during the development life cycle. And one of those things, um, you know, looking at open telemetry, we are collecting data at runtime. So when do we have more runtime scenarios. We have more runtime scenarios when we are uh, working in our local and when we are running tests. So then it got me thinking, OK, so when I have a production issue, um, I'm relying on open telemetry data to understand how my application performs, how it behaves. Does it do what it is supposed to do? Basically, when I'm running tests, I'm trying to use runtime to validate is my application doing what it's supposed to do? And then I thought, OK, how can I integrate this open telemetry data into my test? And with that, not only to use it when something doesn't work, but also to use it in order to validate, is something is it working the way it, it should do? Um, so uh, um, let me share my screen and show you uh, um, a bit of a diagram to kind of uh, make sure we are all on the same page when we are talking about uh, um, tests and what type of test I'm referring to and you know the different approaches you have to do uh, testing in microservices, what are the benefits and what are uh, the things that you should look out for. So um, I have here uh, some imaginary architecture, um, but quite common one for distributed application. So you have a test that you're about to deploy in your CI, um, and you want to run some tests. Therefore, it's this service under test. And um, it's a process that you spin up. It's uh, communicating with some third of Spout the API to do something. It also has a downstream service that it's relying on. Um, this service is getting HTTP call from the service under test. Um, take those calls, communicate with AWS F3 or any other, uh, um, you know, some cloud uh, service out there. Um, and this is your application. And you want to validate that application works. Um, specifically, I'm referring to 
end to uh, an integration test, which for me means um, API testing, UI testing, end to end testing. So you have a test runner that is going to invoke some activities, going to send some network uh, um, to that service in order to activate this service in some way. Could be HTTP, could be UI, could be uh, through a Kafka messaging or, or, or whatever. So I'm basically refer referring to any type of network testing at the end of the day. So let's, let's review what are my options when I'm um, going to test this service. The first and probably uh, the most um, common one would be to use mocks, either to um, uh, do mocks only on th uh, things that I don't control, uh, you know, the, the external uh, stuff, or I can even do it that way and completely isolate my service. And then I have process number one, that would be the test runner sending API code to process number two, that would be the uh, service standard test. And this thing is completely um, isolated from the world. So this thing is super useful. It's so easy to spin up. You just run the service, um, mock whatever, you, you, whatever depends it has, and you're good to go. You can test it. Um, from operation point of view, that is the simplest as it can be. From application perspective, so when we decided to do a mock, um, we gained a very significant amount of stability because my test always uh, uh, would use, it would get the same response, the same data structure from um, the third party API from the mock. However, um, I'm not actually testing how the service perform. I'm testing how the service, service perform in a specific scenario of how the third party API would respond. The same data structure, the same, most likely the same values, and also the amount of time that is going to get response from the third party API. The same goes for the downstream service and the AWS SDK. So that's like what's good and bad about it. And from assertions perspective, what tests can I run? So the test runner is going to, let's say, send an API call and then get the response. I can only validate the response. And I'm not trying to say there is anything wrong with this uh, approach, but it has its benefits and it has its drawback. Uh, I would say if you would open uh, um, my CI in different services, you will find tests like that. Those are great. But we can have um, another approach. And this approach is saying, I want to test the whole thing. I want my test running to send an API call to the service on your test. And then real HTTP calls are going to run between all of those components. Um, for operation point of view, uh, that's a nightmare. You need to spin up so many things. Um, you need to make sure all the configuration works. Um, when it doesn't work, there is always the argument, is it application, is it the DevOps? Um, so you have a lot of things to do. However, when the test run and when the test is stable, you get a real use case that you can see um, the whole view of, of your application, how it's performing, and hopefully how it's going to perform in production environment. And so then, because what I did here is not mocked, it's, um, you know, it's, it's really real. So if the downstream service is going to upload a file to F3 or an object to F3, then I can test not only the response from the service under test, I can also route the dedicated code in my test runner and to uh, test the side effect. I can go to AWS F3 and ask, hey, does the file, is it there? Um, is it in the right format? It, does it have the right permission or whatever I, I want to test? And basically uh, um, that's super important because it gives me a whole view. So just to give you, uh, uh, you know, an example, if somebody is purchasing a, a something in my system, and I want to send an email with an invoice, and um, you want the invoice to be stored in F3, um, you want to validate the invoice is there, right? So now you can really make sure it's really, really there. 
the drawback in this scenario uh, would be two things. First of all, I um, had to write some code uh, that is going to F3 and do doing all this validation. So if I had a bug in you know, putting the code in F3, I may, I may as well have a bug in, in checking if it's there. It's a code like any other, it's good, it has its own uh, uh, bugs. Uh, we are relying that we can check it in the in the uh, um, you know the third party that we're talking on. Um, maybe we can't check it either because we don't have an API for that, or it's something that is not persistent, right? Because in F3 you can go and validate, hey, is the file is is it there? But if you send an API call to a third party, um, I can't go to the to the third party and ask it, hey. Did you get an API call from me in the last second or so? So um, this is the, the the problem with the problems with this with this approach. So now I want to introduce you to what what we did. So basically, um, and again we're talking about the Steel application having open telemetry in them. So um, we have a test running. It's creating real HTTP calls. And those HTTP calls generate traces. Those traces represent the activities that happen in the service and between the services. And then if I'll give you access from the test runner to get the actual trace, to get the trace and to validate based on that trace, then what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to um, take the trace and make sure that it worked. The same way that you would do if you had a production issue in this system, um, you would go and look at the traces and ask, okay, what's wrong here? And rather than do it in manually, we can do it automatically in our uh, uh, testing. So this is the theory behind it. And I think we talked enough and now we can jump to see uh, some code. Um, so the code that I'm going to show you would be, um, the example that you see here. Uh, so we would see two services communicating with one another. You would also uh, um, see the test, the test runner. And if time permits, we will take a look at how the open source, uh, by the way, I never said the name of the open source, which is Malabi. Um, so you can uh, um, go to uh, 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 and, and would see how Malabi uh, uh, is actually implemented, which is kind of simple to be honest. Okay, so diving to our code. So um, if we take a look at our code, we have uh, three files here, um, the service under test, the downstream service, and our service under test spec, which is our testing. So um, the service under test is going to have a few API calls. Um, this is a very demo application, so um, look at it as a demo thing. So we have a slash to do uh, um, endpoint, and the slash to do endpoint is sending an API call to some uh, third party API and then returns the title. We also have an invoice uh, endpoint. The invoice endpoint is also sending an API call to our local host slash data. That would be the downstream, the downstream uh, on slash data is going to put an object and uh, put it in F3 and then response status good. And um, then we have slash user to fetch all the users. Um, we have this a bit more complicated scenario where we're trying to fetch a specific users with a, a specific uh, first name that we will review with more details a bit later and also creating a new uh, user. So that is uh, um, the, what the services are doing. And um, in each service, you, you can see right here um, that we have um, Malabi imported and we'll dive into uh, what it's doing it in a second. So let's take a test, uh, for example. So here you can see the test to slash to do. And slash to do is sending an API call to some endpoint. So I started by um, calling slash to do, and um, I'm validating the response. So far, this is a typical API integration test. Um, you would probably go right here and 
uh, start to validate, I don't know, the response data and make sure that it's in the right structure, the right values or whatever you're trying to validate. Um, and then on top of that, you are going to get um, the ability to use Malaby. And this is this is the open source. So maybe one, one of the most important thing for me, this project, I'm not trying to tell you, you should start writing your test in a different way or throw away your test and move to a new test framework. Not at all. I'm trying to tell you, take what you have today and extend it. Um, so it's not going to replace anything. So the first thing that we are doing is we are getting the telemetry repository. This is wh where the magic happens. This is where the test uh, process is going to communicate with the service under test, collect the telemetry data, and serve it in your test. So this is the test. We have access to our telemetry data. And here we are running our first uh, assertion. Um, go to the telemetry re repository, take the spans, Please take the outgoing HTTP calls. Please take the first one. And we assume that um, it's going to send an API call to this specific route and the status code to be 200. Again, this is the internal code. So we have like two API calls, the service under test send, it, send the API call to the service and the service sent an outgoing. So we are testing right now the internals of, of that service. And um, this is like trying to be as convenient as possible. So you have access to spans. And span is basically the event that every interaction between services or between dependencies is an event. And here you can see uh, a whole very long list of whatever things that you can get, whether it's AWS, database operations, um, messaging um, uh, systems like Kafka, SQS, RabbitMQ. So basically you get like a big list of things that you can uh, validate on. So um, once you chose which type of uh, um, um, spends you wanna get, so any AWS spend would be now accessible, then I may want to get specifically a three interaction. Then I want to get the first one. And now I can validate for any kind of attribute it might have. So this is uh, uh, like having the simplest uh, um, um, test. And maybe before I'm jumping into the rest of the test, I'll review a bit what it means to, to set it up um, because the setup uh, should be fairly simple. So first thing first, we assume that there is open telemetry installed um, in the service under test or any other service that is running. To make your life easier, we chose to do uh, um, to wrap open telemetry with uh, using Malabi. Uh, but this is pu purely open telemetry. If you already have open telemetry, you don't need to uh, uh, run Malabi instrument. You can tweak a bit the open telemetry you already have, and then it it would work. So the way that it works is that Malabi is a uh, uh, um, collecting the traces, collecting the spans, and allow them to be collected via HTTP call. So if we'll go to uh, the test that we just looked, so we have here the uh, get telemetry repository. The get telemetry repository is basically a function that is fetching the remote telemetry. So Malabi gives you the access to fetch the remote telemetry and with a specific port or a base URL. Um, so we are fetching the, the, uh, 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 all the telemetry data. And then before we start any new test, we are cleaning the telemetry repository so that traces won't uh, uh, um, leak between different uh, test runs. Um, we call it telemetry, not spans, because open telemetry is not only about tracing and spans is also about logging and metrics so someday we may extend it to collect not only uh traces but also uh you know metrics and and logs and, and stuff like that okay so just to uh, uh to go through the process we sent an api call that calls the service under test to collect the traces keep them in memory 
then we are fetching it from the memory um, assertion based on that. And before running a new test, we are just cleaning it. So we won't have uh, a more um, uh, traces leaking between tests. OK, um, so let's go through uh, more types of tests that we may do. Um, you would see that the pattern is almost uh, uh, similar. Um, so if we are looking at, uh, um, again, uh, at slash users, we're sending an API call to slash user, fetching the telemetry. And this is where we are starting to have stuff that are not HTTP based. So SQLize, if you're not uh, familiar with that, that's an ORM, uh, a JavaScript, the TypeScript uh, ORM to communicate with your database. Um, so basically we are validating that um, we are grabbing a SQLize activity. We um, assert that there must be only one. So if you have a bug and it's going to be suddenly instead of one query, it's going to be 10 queries, your test is going to fail. Um, and then you're asserting that it's a select and you're asserting that the response is an array. Imagine what you need to go through um, without having uh, uh, the ability to look at your, at your traces. Um, and here we are going to um, even a more complex scenario, a scenario where we're calling slash invoice. And when you're calling slash invoice, you have two hops. So the service under test is, the test framework is calling service under test and service under test is calling our downstream service. And downstream service is going to call the, uh, uh, um, the AWS SDK. So here, what we are doing is first of all, we are validating that we are in fact calling the slash data and also validating we are the only one and it was successful. We are able to make sure that we had one interaction with the AWS SDK and that's an F3 uh, uh, of type of, uh, of F3 activity. We can take the payload that we sent to F3 and validate that the key is the right one. So um, that is uh, um, like, being able to go all the way through. And um, one of the use cases that you know, I, I'm showing right now specifically API calls, um, and it may be very interesting to, 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 to remind that this could also work with end-to-end -end test. Um, so let's assume that you're doing some uh, UI testing and you want to validate with your that you did you I don't know, fill up some form in your UI, and now you want to make sure that uh, um, I don't know an email was sent. Um, then you can do that, and this is like really really powerful. <clears throat> yeah, um, cool. So I do want to show um, one more interesting. Uh, um, Test before I'll, I'll uh, um, yeah. So one more interesting test before I dive into how Malabi is uh, implemented. And this is a, a use case that uh, we encountered several times with people having problems uh, with it. And that is when you have a database and a, and a cache, uh, a Redis. Um, kind of protecting it and you want to make sure that not all the requests are ending up in your uh, in your uh, database, but rather being hit by, by a cache. So um, what um, we're doing here is we are sending an API call to slash user and basically creating a new user and validating it, cool. Um, then we're going to fetch the new user that was just created so uh, we're fetching it by uh, the first name and validating that that was successful. Now, those who are going to, from the contract point of view, assure you that the, everything works, but now we want to make sure that the internal works. Nobody guarantees you till this, in, in, in this portion of the code that the data is going to be found in your, uh, um, in your cache. 
And if we, I saw uh, companies having downtime because this thing that was supposed to be in the cache wasn't present in the cache. And um, it's hard to test it. It really is. So let's see how, how we can do that. So um, again, we are uh, calling get telemetry repository. We now have uh, all, all the activities available. We're fetching um, both the SQLize, the database one, and the Redis ones. And first thing first, I want to make sure that the first interaction, so SQLize, the first interaction, the DB operation was insert. And that is because our first API was um, inserting to, my, to, to the database. Then the next thing that should happen is that we are going to Redis and we're going to try and fetch uh, Jerry from, uh, from our cache. And we, uh, we are validating that we are requesting for Jerry in the right format, the right query. And we're also expecting to get that it's empty. So we are expecting it to not be present in our cache. Then what we are doing is um, we are uh, again querying a database and running a select statement because we want to fetch the, the, uh, the user from the database and then we expect to push it to the Redis. Let me go and show you like, um, for me, this is a very good use case of, of Malibu because it really shows the power of, of what you can do with it. And maybe just to show you again, how the code looks. So this is how the code looks like. So we called slash user with Jerry. Uh, it was present, so not the, uh, that, so we are proceeding to this portion of the code. We first checked if it was present in our cache. If it was, we were just uh, uh, respond with it. It's not present, so we need to fetch it in our database. And uh, once we fetch it from a database, we can push it back to our, uh, uh, to our Redis. So this is ensuring that the whole process of checking if it's if it is available, if not pull it from database and then push it back uh, to Redis is working and everybody is, is happy and we're good to go. Um, I think that at this point I'll jump into um, maybe showing a bit how uh, Malabi itself is implemented. Again, um, it's kind of easier than, than expected, I would say, um, because there isn't like a lot of things happening there. So we have a few repositories here. So um, the first one is uh, um, basically our ability to uh, um, start the instrumentation. So if you remember in our service, the first thing that we did, we, call, we were calling instrument. So the instrument function is basically spinning up open telemetry with a very few um, changes. So change number one that we are doing is actually set up a sampler um, because, um, because Malabi is communicating using HTTP, it's going to generate spend by itself. And you don't want to see uh, Malabi spends in your testing. So basically what we are doing, if um, the uh, uh, trace, the HTTP uh, target starts with Malabi, we are not recording it. So we won't uh, put stuff that you're not interested in in your test. The second thing is we are using an in-memory exporter um, our in-memory exporter collects the spends, uh, store them, and waiting for them to be fetched. Um, and I'll show you how it looks like. So um, our memory exporter is a very simple um, open telemetry exporter, plain, pure open telemetry exporter with two functions, get spends and reset spends, which are calling uh, um, the in-memory exporter functions. <clears throat> and then we're doing uh, getting all the auto instrumentation available for that. So we would get anything possible. And we do uh, uh, using two important things. The first one is to collect all payloads. So that is giving you the ability when you're 
sending an API call, writing to a database, uploading a file to F3, that gives you the ability to um, look at the payload itself and assert them. So it's not only giving you the ability to uh, have uh, uh, to validate the interaction, but the actual data that is being transferred. So, so this is why we use the collect uh, payload true. And the second thing that we're doing is we are suppressing the internal instrumentation. And this is kind of a funny thing that maybe uh, maybe some of you won't be aware, but um, when you're doing like a AWS um, dot uh, put to object, that is going to create an HTTP call. And that is going to be caught in your uh, instrumentation by default. And again, you don't want that. You don't want it. You don't, you, you're not going to try and make sure that the AWS SDK, uh, um, the structure of the API call is correct. So we don't want to have stuff that we're not going to test. So we're suppressing the internal instrumentation. So that is the part of uh, um, how we are collecting the data. And then in order um, to serve it, um, we have an HTTP server. And this HTTP server, um, whenever you call slash Malabi, it's going to this router. This router has uh, two simple um, endpoints slash spans with get that would return the spans we collected and um, the delete uh, slash spans would, of course, delete them from the in-memory uh, uh, exporter. And you can see here that we are using um, protobuf. The reason that we're using protobuf to transfer um, uh, um, the results, the traces um, from the from Malabi, uh, from service to Malabi um, is because we do want to support different programming languages. So we don't want it to be, um, it has to be Node.js all the way. So if you want uh, to have Node.js in your test framework, but you're testing Python or Java service, that will be uh, uh, doable. And then Protobuf is going to make sure that the data remains uh, in the right structure all the time. Um, <clears throat> and, um, yeah, so, so that's the HTTP service and the function that we saw earlier of fetch, um, fetching the, uh, um, the the remote telemetry is a very simple calling the slash Malabi slash pens and doing this transformation and the same goes for the clear remote. So um, basically that's how Malabi is uh, collecting the data and transferring it from place to place. The other uh, thing that we did is um, kind of making your life easier when it comes to finding what you're looking for. So to filter all the spans uh, only for uh, HTTP, for instance, um, this is something that you need to know how to do. Uh, you need to know open telemetry <clears throat> and sometimes to know quite well how to find the right span. So we wanted to make your life a bit easier. So those would be the functions that we use in order to uh, find the right thing that you're looking for. So if you're looking for a message received, so your service is receiving messages from through Kafka. So what you would do, <clears throat> you would do uh, spans dot uh, uh, messaging receive, and then we would filter only for the right uh, um, the right spans. And we also wrap the spans themselves in order to make sure that it's also easier right here. Uh, so for instance, if you gather the headers, uh, that's an, an annoying object to work with. We wanted to simplify stuff. And also if you're trying to find a specific attribute within, uh, um, <clears throat> within the span, again, just to make your life a bit, uh, a bit easier. Uh, you do have access to the uh, raw, uh, data itself. So um, let me show you just a second how it looks. So if you go to uh, if you go to uh, Redis activities, and then you take the first one, you can access the raw attributes, and then um, you can do whatever you're looking for. If we miss some uh, something or we had a bug, or you have manual instrumentation, so you'll have access to it. So that's the uh, 
open source. Um, <clears throat> just like to give you a bit of uh, a roadmap thing that what are the main thing that, that we are going to work on. So currently uh, <clears throat> the test runner is going, is communicate directly with every service, which could be rather annoying. Um, so we want to have a kind of a backend. So all the traces, probably today are shipping the traces somewhere. Um, so we want to spin up some traces backend, such as Jaeger, Zipkin, and then Malabi will communicate with Jaeger. So the setup would be even easier. You just point uh, uh, the test runner to Jaeger, you point your services to Jaeger, and everybody is happy. So uh, that's one thing that we are going to add. Also support for metrics and logs um, and supporting more languages. Right now we support only uh, uh, JavaScript as you saw. And lastly, we very much want to add instrumentation to the test framework themselves. So then you will have the test name with the span that is generated. So we'll be able to look how what when you look at the test, what span is generated, and you could have all of that all together. And I think I didn't show you the repository. So the service name is Malabi. The service, the, the open source name is Malabi. And uh, you can go here and find whatever you're looking for. Cool. So that that was my speech about open telemetry and testing. Thank you so much, Michael. Uh, with that, uh, I, I do have a few questions, but just as a, if you're just tuning in or uh, if you've been with us, thank you for viewing. If you have any questions for Michael, if you want to talk about traces or anything like that, uh, please feel free to throw that into the chat and we'll get those questions asked. I think, uh, thank you for sharing that repository as well, uh, Michael. I know that was one question that I saw was what was the name of the open source and that was Malaby and uh, there is where you get it is on GitHub. Uh, fantastic. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to throw those in chat. Uh, otherwise, I have a few here myself. So my first question is, um, how do we use tracing data today? And, and what are some things that can be done with tracing overall? Yeah, I think, um, you know, when, you, when we're looking at, the, um, at specifically uh, things like uh, uh, open telemetry, you mostly would use it for you have a production issue and you need to fix it and you need to fix it fast. So if you would ask a, you know, a manager um, in an R&D organization, uh, how do you measure how open telemetry works? You would I'd probably say something like MTTR, mean time to resolve, recover, repair. So that's how you're using it today. And I think every time that you're putting this investment to um, collect data about your application, you should always look for more ways. And I think the main thing that interests me is what we can do in, in pre-production, um, what we can do it in, in, in test, uh, we can do it, what we can do with it in, in our CI, in our local environment. I, I really like that focus that you had too on testing and really showing examples of how you could get that implemented. Uh, I, I did, I do recall seeing one tweet. Uh, if if I can find it, I'll share it a little bit later uh, on, on on my on my handle. But it kind of goes into that one uh, library that was released for Go in in this case and talked about how now you can include this for you know your testing use cases and things like that. I really like that you pointed out that this is something that yeah. you can really uh, factor in or refactor in and get a sense of what's going on with your code and with your overall stack. And you don't have to necessarily push to production to get some of those insights. Now, granted, it's yeah. nice to have that instrumented in production so you can see what's going on too, of course, but uh, I think that that's really fantastic. Um, yeah. are, are, have, have you seen any specific issues um, uh, solved around implementing tracing or some success stories on this front that you might be able to talk to? Um, well, with open telemetry, yeah, a, a lot. And, and specifically with, with testing, I think the, the people who use it are mostly using it in a UI testing in, because when you're doing UI testing, um, being able to understand what happened in the 
end of your system, uh, the other end of the UI system. So use case that that, that I know uh, somebody filled the form using some uh, um, UI testing tool, and uh, then the, you, the the form sent an API call to service. Then the service sent an Kafka message. Another service would consume that message and send an email to the customer. They wanted to make sure that the email really gets there. Um, so they did all kind of thing. They, they had those flaky solution uh, and then they just used tracing, which they already had. It was really simple and, and straightforward. Interesting, interesting. I think when it comes to, have, have you also seen some, like I know uh, when it comes to Kubernetes and, and some other things, you're able to take those metrics, that data, those traces, and use that to, you know, say, uh, scale your workload horizontally or vertically or, or in some fashion. Are there uh, are there any um, are there any use cases that you've seen like that where uh, people are using open telemetry to then do modifications either to their infrastructure or maybe run their code a little bit differently too? Have have we hit that point yet? So I never saw something like that or or heard, but I. I can definitely see that that happening. I did uh, um, met a company who um, they're do, doing gradual rollout, and they use the tracing to determine whether to proceed with the gradual, uh, the gradual phases. Um, actually, the I think the ecosystem is not quite there. They had all the problems getting it done, but but I think it was a very interesting use case. <laughs> that's that is interesting. That's and that's cool to that's cool to hear about. Yeah, I'm excited to see more of of kind of what evolves on that front and and what we see come from the community and all these different use cases. I feel like there's there's no limit to what we can potentially see. Um, yeah. Awesome. Uh, one question I had was, uh, uh, why is it possible or preferable to solve these issues with tracing as opposed to other tools or, or architectures or methods? So I think it's the amount of work that you need to put in to solve those things. So you have an application, this application, you, it's already telling you what it's doing. So when you grab this story of what it's telling you, store using traces, um, the ability to validate it, it's already there. It's, 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 it's simple. If you start, if you need to start developing dedicated code um, to, uh, um, to validate tests. So the example that I gave is uh, write dedicated code and fetch uh, whatever was uh, uploaded to F3. So you need to fetch it and then validate it. So you now have more code to maintain. You have um, more, uh, 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 the next developer, we need, we need to work harder to understand how it works as opposed to traces where it's, just it's already outputted by the application. So it's just making your life easier. I, I will I say like that, that if if you start if you put enough work, you can do everything without it. It's not like it's doing something that couldn't be done. It's just already there. So just use it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. Just it's it's already there. Just use it. I, I, I absolutely agree with that. And I think that and, and and I'd imagine it helps out team members as you know as people move into new projects or you know this is just yet another tool you can use to kind of get that introspection into your code or your stack when you might not have that familiarity with it like like you said you know if you are are mindful and you have that full understanding of your stack and what those requests look like what you know what's going on and the why yeah. uh, then you've got good context but if you don't Open tracing can really help out and hand the baton off to the next person that's that's working on the project. That's cool. Yeah. Um, uh, what are uh, one question I got was what are some solutions that people use for storing data obtained with uh, with Open Telemetry and with with these types of tracing tools? Um, so you mean what database would, would people would use to store traces? Yeah, um, either different solutions, uh, uh, basically just repositories are storing this so they could go back and look at, you know, historical builds or, or compare or, or kind of what is what does that look like? Yeah, so so eventually, uh, um, well, either you use a vendor that stores the data for you, 
uh, or you are storing it yourself and store it in some database. Uh, um, I know most people would use either, most people will use Elasticsearch for that, um, which is super convenient because you already have a, a Grafana um, Kibana on top of it and it allows you to do dashboarding alerts, whatever you wanna do with it. Um, so that's a great approach. That's what I chose to use. I know some other people are using uh, Cassandra, um, but I think the recommended thing is, is Elasticsearch. Gotcha, gotcha. That makes sense and uh, makes it easy to search after the fact too, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awesome. I do have a few more questions here, uh, but uh, definitely would like to encourage if anyone uh, watching has some questions, uh, please feel free to throw those into chat and I'll be more than happy to ask on that front. Awesome. Uh, my next question was, uh, as people start to get working with open telemetry and with tracing, uh, what are some common pitfalls that you you'll see, or some just you know uh, either you know whether that be like frequently asked questions or or common misconceptions that come up when people start to to work with tracing? Um, so I think there are three things. Um, the first one, the first kind of uh, why do I need it question would be how is that different from logs? Um, you can in some sense get almost the same thing done using using logs. Um, but uh, um, so that, that would be number one. Number two would be um, how it's going to affect my uh, performance. And number three would be um, I implemented open telemetry, but I don't see all of my data uh, the way I want it to, 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 uh, to look like. So um, looking at logs versus traces there is a lot of uh, uh stuff to read around that um but i would say that logs are great to to tell you what the process is doing what is the story the single process is going to to tell you about open telemetry is about the context about the path that uh, is happening between services it's going to tell you the story throughout services not within the service um about performance, yes, it's going to affect your performance like any other uh, um, library that is going to instrument your uh, um, your uh, uh, your service. So if you put some APM, it's affecting your your performance. But I think the performance impact is definitely uh, worth it, and you can control it by uh, uh, controlling the uh, sampling rate. So you don't have to collect one hundred percent of uh, what's happening, you can uh, take a portion out of it. And um, about how the data looks at the end of the day. So uh, um, first of all, open telemetry is uh, quite a new project. Uh, it's not a very mature project. So it has bugs, issues uh, that you may need to put some work in order to fix it. And in some specific cases, uh, um, you need to set expectation what you're looking for to get from from open telemetry. Awesome, awesome. No, and I'm I'm kind of excited to see what comes out of that too, because I know, uh, you know, looking at open tracing and open census and kind of like how all of, I, I was really excited to see um, these communities come together and kind of converge on what's important, what are things we can measure, and how do we, you know, how do we help elevate others uh, within the same space? So, uh, yeah, uh, kind of, kind of in that vein, um, are there? What do you think are some of the good, like, next problems uh, that the tracing community should focus on that might help out uh, the community as a whole? Um, so, first of all, everything uh, should be uh, um, like. Um, released as a stable. So right now, for instance, uh, tracing is stable, um, metrics is in beta, and I think uh, logs in, is in alpha. So open telemetry isn't released fully yet. So I think that's what we need to uh, uh, get organized first. Um, um, then I would say that we need to make sure that the data we are collecting is as you know, as quality as, as as we can get, because if the data you're collecting isn't quality enough, uh, the value that the open term offers is is capped by that. 
Gotcha. Gotcha. That, that makes sense to me. And then, um, it's, it's, and, and it's, it can be a hard space to solve these problems in as well. Um, so uh, I, I can imagine too, because again, you know, context is always key when trying to troubleshoot or, or find out some of these things too. So it's, uh, it's, it's interesting and, and exciting with, with that, um, what are, what are some good uh, ways to get started? Uh, you know, say if people want to contribute or, or kind of get active within the community, where are some places that they can meet up meetings, uh, repositories, where, where are some places that people can get more information on this? So, um, very funnily, um, uh, my next session in a 10 minutes or so is uh, uh, about getting started with open telemetry. Uh, so we're doing like an open telemetry bootcamp. Um, I think that uh, um, if you're starting, uh, start by reading the docs um, and just get Good familiar. With, <laughs> yeah, get 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 familiar with the docs, the terms. Um, follow like a getting started thing and look for a, a good guide in YouTube on getting started. I think that would give you everything you need. Awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you so much, Michael. This was uh, just incredibly fascinating. It was great to see you walk through the code. Thank you for taking the time to to kind of show all of us and talk more about open telemetry and tracing and and really how to get started when it comes to your your stack. Uh, really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining the latest episode of Cloud Native Live. It was great to hear Michael about uh, from Michael about trace-based testing with Open Telemetry. Um, thank you all for jumping in and attending. We really liked the interaction and questions from the audience. Uh, and again, we will bring we bring you the latest Cloud Native code and uh, presentations every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Next week, we will have Scott Fulton presenting Next Generation Observability with Open Source Monitoring. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you next week. Have a good one, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.